With 430 million monthly active users, Reddit is one of the biggest social media platforms and definitely the biggest forum on the internet. People use Reddit for all kinds of purposes. Finding like-minded people for practically anything, getting your questions answered, having discussions on all types of topics and more. With so many people on Reddit, it will inevitably attract criminals, who share the darkest thoughts and secrets for everyone to see. Today, we will take a look at the dark world of Reddit criminals. Jake3572 Jake3572, or better known as Jake Davison, was a 22-year-old man who took the life of his mother and that of five others. One of the victims was only three years old. Only a few weeks prior to his crime, he received a shotgun license from the police. Jake was active on numerous subreddits which were incel related, like r incel tier, r men's rights and r virgin. Since his account was deleted, we can take a look at a few posts of his on Wayback. The number of posts is very limited, but it gives us a good idea of what type of individual Jake is. In this first one, we have a fairly harmless looking post. He describes himself as a forgotten outcast, who was forgotten by most people and doesn't get a single like on his Facebook profile, his only form of online contact. He also says that he only speaks to his mom and boss, but that's about it with his social life. He was previously banned from R incel tier due to being exposed of grooming a 16 year old girl. He also talks about another group of people which go by black pill or black pilled. Black pilled is defined as quote, Black pilitarians believe that looks are genetically determined and that women choose sexual partners based solely on physical features, lookism. So whether or not a person will be an incel is predetermined. Interestingly, Jake would make posts sharing a speech from a video game called Killzone 2 and said that you would understand his viewpoint by watching it. He describes a certain group in that video game as black pilled. My people, sons and daughters of Helgan, for many years we have been a broken nation, shunned, oppressed, and conquered by those we sought to escape. Ten years ago, I asked for time, and that time was granted by you. You, the strength in my arm, the holders of my dreams. I personally didn't really understand where he's coming from, and most commenters under that video also talked about stuff that was completely unrelated. One of the last posts available in the archive is this one. This illustrates quite perfectly what his opinion about women are. Quote, Women are programmed to be professional victims. They never take responsibility for anything, their bad behavior, bad choices, or bad morals. It's always men, society, the patriarchy, ugly men, creepy guys, or other women's fault. He continues venting about how bad his mother is, but still stays with her because of money reasons. The last comment that I want to share is at the same time the most ironic one, given the context I established in the beginning. Here he says, if you are enjoying life, I'm glad. I just don't like it when people make ignorant comments and accuse me as if I'm some kind of vile, disgusting monster of a person. Well, you pretty much prove the contrary by taking the lives of so many people, including that of your mother and that of a child. F -stop Fox. This is a very recent case. The user F -stop Fox started a subreddit called F -stop Fitzgerald in 2017. However, this only received real traction on the 28th of April this year. F Star Fox, or rather known as 55 year old Richard Burdett, was charged with numerous crimes such as luring a child under 18, production, possessing, accessing, and making available of CP on a subreddit and other platforms online. At the time of me working on this video, we have the 19th of May. On the 20th, he'll have his court hearing. On his subreddit, he shared scripted audios, which included content about minors and school students. The disturbing part is the number of members frequenting the subreddit. The subreddit had over 5,000 users. The description of the subreddit reads, a repository for all my recordings. Toronto police executed a search warrant on April 20 and found evidence for everything I mentioned. Ever since his arrest, the police shut down the subreddit as well. It was also revealed that Richard Burdett was a high school drama teacher and had more than 1,300 explicitly charged messages with a high school student. This was in 2007. He only received a one month suspension for this behavior. There's way more that he did, but it all boils down to the things he was charged for. Jimbo Boy 
Okay, this is a super recent case and the info might be outdated when you see this video. This literally only happened a few days ago. 18 year old Peyton Grandin took the lives of 10 and injured 13. It is speculated that this crime was motivated by hate since he targeted a supermarket in the heart of a predominantly black community and 11 of the 13 people were also black. The people were just minding their own business and doing some shopping and this idiot came in and took their lives. It's just ridiculous. He was planning on going for a prolonged rampage according to documentations that police uncovered. He was heavily armed, wearing tactical gear, including a tactical helmet, along with plated armor. To really no one's surprise, the guy also had a camera and livestreamed his crime on Twitch from his point of view. This seems to be a reenactment of Brandon Terrence's crime. Brandon made a post on HN back then, announcing what he'll do and livestreamed the entire thing. Investigators also added that Peyton was studying previous hate attacks, according to search warrants in his online archives. Peyton even created a private Discord server and invited a few people on there. 30 minutes prior to his attack, he announced what he'll do on there. Interestingly, Peyton was planning this for months. He went to the supermarket numerous times, wrote about the activity inside the store each time he went in, noting how many black and white people were in the market, even drawing a map of the inside of the store. Interestingly, he also was considering going to a church or elementary school to carry out his attack, but went with a store because of the number of people that go to grocery stores. I mean, what the fuck, dude? Peyton also had an online presence on 4chan, Discord and even on Reddit. His account was obviously pretty much immediately banned after the incident, but limited archives exist. On Reddit, Peyton went by Jimbo Boy. Everything seems ordinary at first, but when he started posting on the subreddit made me smile, it went downhill really quickly. Here he writes, This is racist because there's no white people in this video. This could be perceived as a joke, since he didn't post anything in this fashion prior, at least according to his archives, but obviously with the now given context this seems to be his real opinion. He asked numerous questions on the subreddit R Tactical Gear and also on R Quality Tactical Gear as well as R Ammo. This is also why he was so well informed about which armor to wear and which equipment to use. On R Ammo he made his final post, which was on the 14th of May 2022. One day later the media covered his case. It's quite tragic what all of these people do for attention nowadays, I mean the guy livestreamed his crime on Twitch. It's also strange how easy it is to acquire weapons in the US. I mean Peyton legally owned his weapons and that at the age of 18. Anyway, if you've made it this far, you clearly seem to like what you're seeing, so how about you sub to the channel? Thanks. Carl H. This one is probably the most popular case out of everything in this list and was covered by other YouTubers like Nexpo. Carl Harold, or also known as Carl H on Reddit, was not only known for his very sinister crimes in real life, but also for his helpful and friendly online persona. Carl created a subreddit called Carl H Programming, with the purpose of teaching beginners and advanced coders how to program. His classes were all for free. Coding is a very difficult skill to master, and someone offering so much valuable resources and knowledge completely for free made most people appreciate what Carl did. Carl was in fact so well liked that he even received the Redditor of the Day on the 26th of July 2012. However, it is important to note that he also offered private lessons, where he charged up to $70 per lesson. Around 2013, Carl suddenly stopped posting. There also was a lack of activity on his other social media channels. Finally, there was an update on Carl. Something that nobody would expect based on his online persona. 32 year old Carl Harold was charged with producing and distributing CP. It was not only one case, he was charged for multiple cases. The victim was a 9 year old boy, which he abused, photographed, filmed and then distributed to others. The boy was tortured and sodomized on camera. In total, he held the child captive for a duration of 8 months. If this wasn't bad enough already, the boy was his own son. His son was never enrolled in school, never received normal immunizations and never had unsupervised play or outings. And Carl had a partner named Charles Donovan, who participated in the same ordeal. Charles was charged for the same crimes. On Reddit, most people couldn't really fathom the news. However, the news were undeniable and the evidence was stacked against Carl. Admiration for his work completely stopped. People were furious, insulting him in numerous comments on YouTube, even on his own subreddit. Carl was supposed to be extradited to New York, but was found dead in his jail cell. He took his own life. His partner Charles was sentenced to 56 years in prison. 
As for the son, the information about him is pretty much non-existent. He should be about 17 or 18 years of age right now. Hopefully he had some sort of recovery, both mentally and physically, but it's obvious that he'll be scarred for the rest of his life. Pilot 94 Pilot 94's account has been deleted ever since, but there were numerous coverages on websites about this case, but no coverage on YouTube as far as I can tell. This dates back to 2013. The user Pilot94 wrote a lengthy post on the subreddit of my chest. In this post, he reveals that he and his best friend named Patrick had intercourse with three girls aged between 13 to 14 years of age. He and Patrick were 18 years old at the time and got away with their crime. His post has a title, I should be in prison. It's very long, so I'll break it down to the main points. He talks about how he was constantly moving from state to state, but was overall very successful in life. He describes himself as athletic, good-looking, well-liked and from a wealthy family. He came from a conservative Christian family. He vents about how he had a girlfriend that cheated on him with one of his good friends, which spiraled into deep depression. Meanwhile, he also stopped taking his prescriptions for ADD and ADHD. Being in a dark place, his friend Patrick helped him out, but not in a way that is really meaningful. Patrick basically turned him into a drug dealer. They got into trouble with the police. Not only for selling, he also was vandalizing parks and other places in town. They did way more stuff like drinking, driving while being minors, shoplifting and speeding, but weren't charged for them. Even in the case of getting charged for the vandalization, they only received a probation and a fee, nothing that would stop them from doing the unthinkable. They met girls from school which he thought were around 15 to 16, but turned out to be 13 to 14 years old. The teenagers were drunk and called them up. He and Patrick drove them to a neighborhood and they had intercourse with them for about an hour. A police car pulled up and the girls started accusing them of abuse. The girls said the only reason for the intercourse was due to them being drunk. All of them were virgins and one of them had tearing in her genital area. The evidence was clear, but the lead detective and chief of police were fired and the case just disappeared. They were never charged. He talks about how he and Patrick turned their lives around graduated high school and joined the military, but he never talks about how the victims feel or what they are doing. He never once shared that he feels guilt or is ashamed. Nothing. He somewhat sounds proud that he got away with this crime. Luckily, the guy wasn't intelligent. Just a month later, he would share a scholarship letter, pretty much doxing himself. Someone contacted his college about this entire thing. So as a last ditch effort to save himself, he deleted his post and created a new account. This is the final update from his side, quote, I posted some personal stuff that most people kinda knew, but were still major for me, as I don't open up often. I felt good about it and people were supportive. As I was new to Reddit, I didn't make a throwaway when I posted it, so it kinda lingered at the bottom of my account. I thought about deleting it, but then I thought, what's the point of getting something out there if nobody knows who it is? I'm not proud of what I'd done, but I had done it. My fault and my mistake. I kept posting things, and eventually I posted something about my university choice and info about it in a subreddit I thought would appreciate it and be okay. Apparently someone read back through my post and saw the off my chest post. So this white knight decides to call my university and explains everything that I've done. Now I'm being looked at by my superiors and almost certainly getting kicked out, which will ruin my life. Thank god. In this post he also added, but now because of minor things I did in the past, I won't have the future I've worked so hard to achieve. Again, he doesn't care about the lives of these girls he ruined. He only cares about himself. There is no sense of remorse whatsoever from his side. He refers to people calling him out as white knights and pretends that it was not a big deal, but rather a minor mistake. A different Redditor adds, Dude, seriously? You have no qualms about ruining two children's lives. Getting two girls 13, 14 drunk with your body and awarding them. How do you think they are doing now? Do you think they are breezing through high school? Do you think they are emotionally well? Do you even care? He may have been kicked out of college, but he was still never charged. These girls will have to live with this torment for the rest of their lives. Whereas Pilot94 and his friend Patrick were lucky that the police were no longer interested in their case. Galpticos. This is an extremely dark case and I won't be able to go in depth. I'll only cover the surface level of this topic. Galpticos, or better known as Farhan Tohit, and shared a 12 page letter on Google Docs and posted links to them on Twitter and Instagram. They are incredibly easy to find. However, I wouldn't recommend reading them. 
They are very detailed and describe his crime and his mental state. It also shows how delusional and flawed his mindset and thought process is. Nothing that one needs to read. Normally, I would have at least included a few segments of his letter to show his motives and intentions, but you might understand why I cannot do that here on YouTube. I must admit, I have been doing this for a while and research about very dark subject matters, but going through the letter was very difficult. In the following, I'll mainly talk about his Reddit account. 19-year-old Farhan Tohit was found dead in Allen Cullen County, Texas on the 5th of April 2021. Next to Tohit were his twin sisters, his brother, his father, his mother, and his grandmother. All of their lives were taken by Farhan Tohit himself. In his letter, he said that people should check out his GitHub code. There we can find a username, Gulpdikos. He also says that this is his Reddit handle. Looking at his post history, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. Mostly posts in gaming subreddits or comments on Ask Reddit. However, considering the context and the person behind this account, there are a few very dark and prophetic comments. Here he responds to an Ask Reddit. The question was, what problem are you currently trying to solve? His response, quote, finding the motivation to wake up every day for the rest of my life. A different question reads, what life decisions are you struggling with right now? Is there any way we can help? He responds in a similar fashion, quote, my summer is almost over and there are so many things I want to improve about myself, but I can't get the motivation to do anything. That's all I can talk about in this video. Aaron Swartz. This person is probably the least disturbing person in this entire list, but he still is considered a criminal by state prosecutors and is actually one of the co-founders of Reddit, so I had to include him in this video. Aaron Swartz was prosecuted for multiple violations of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986. However, it's extremely important to know who Aaron Swartz exactly was and why he is valued by a lot of people in the online realm. And there are nearly two hour long documentaries about Aaron. I'll only talk about the main aspects of his life, especially things considering his alleged criminal history. Aaron Swartz was an internet pioneer. He worked on numerous projects which are fundamental for the online world to this date. He was involved with the development of the web feed format RSS which allows users and applications to access updates to websites in a standardized, computer-readable format. Subscribing to RSS feeds can allow a user to keep track of many different websites in one centralized location, which constantly monitor websites for new content, removing the need for the user to manually check them. This is obviously a huge innovation, which is being used by website developers to this date. He co-founded Reddit. I think I don't really need to elaborate how big Reddit is nowadays. Aaron also played a big role in the early stages of development for Creative Commons, which is a major organization which allows creators on YouTube or other platforms to use the work of others for free. We only need to give the respective artists credit and that's it. He also worked on web.py and Markdown. So this guy was basically a major player in very important online tools. I didn't even list everything that he worked on. Keep in mind that he was super young when he worked on all of this, so he definitely was a genius of some sort. While all of this sounds great to a certain extent, there is a really dark outcome to this. According to state and federal authorities, Aaron used JSTOR, an online library, to download a large number of academic journal articles and through MIT's computer network over the course of a few weeks in late 2010 and early 2011. According to authorities, Aaron downloaded the documents through a laptop connected to a networking switch in a controlled access wiring closet at MIT. You may ask why Aaron decided to download all of these files. He shared a manifesto in 2008. In this manifesto, his intentions become very clear. Quote, Information is power, but like all power, there are those who want to keep it for themselves. The world's entire scientific and cultural heritage, published over centuries in books and journals, is increasingly being digitized and locked up by a handful of private corporations. Want to read the papers featuring the most famous results of the sciences? You'll need to send enormous amounts to publishers like Reed Elsevier. This is pretty much always his intention, to make information free and accessible to everyone, especially in the online realm. He also was a heavy opponent of censorship. While he was downloading the PDFs, a video camera caught Aaron in the act, which forced him to surrender the downloaded data. However, this didn't stop the federal prosecutors. Aaron was arrested on the night of January 6, 2011, near the Harvard campus by MIT police and a Secret Service agent and was arraigned on two state charges of breaking and entering with intent to commit a felony. On July 11, 2011, he was indicted by federal grand jury on charges of wire fraud, computer fraud, 
unlawfully obtaining information and recklessly damaging a protected computer. There was a huge back and forth. Prosecutors were constantly dropping original charges and trying to get him arrested by other means. Every deal was rejected by Aaron's attorneys and the prosecution continued until January 11, 2013 and then suddenly stopped. The reason was Aaron taking his life. And people assumed that the pressure of the lawsuit and process got the better of him. Aaron's parents blamed the government for Aaron's death as well. It's quite tragic that a guy that seemed to have good intentions was so heavily and unnecessarily punished by federal prosecutors. It really didn't make any sense. The prosecutors had to backpedal a lot during trial and Aaron would have probably not gotten a sentence, but the pressure and stress got the better of him. Yo, before finding this off, I want to thank Zeus for recommending some of these users to me. Also, I dropped a Patreon exclusive video on disturbing fortune topics not so long ago. If you are interested, you'll get everything I offer on there for just $2. I also want to thank the patrons in the Elite and Legend tier, which consist of 44, Christopher J. McCulloch, Courtney Colt, Krabs Ugen, Dave Birkins, Deiji Chest R, Electrocat, Illy Bueno, Ion Wenkmer, Finde Kader Ludwiger, Foster Bradley, I Love the Second Amendment, James Baker, Laura Hansen, Lord of the Lizards, Madeline Tanner, Margox C, Nikias Beardius, NX Sequel, Rick, S4BRE, Jinx, Santino Sierra, Shawnee, William Taylor, Amy Stringfellow, Elena Had Shoes Mom, Andrew906, Bodie, Brian Cave, Brian Ashuff, Cameron Mishet, Christopher, Dark Nalol, Dennis Reesfire, Digital Capybara, Erica Romero, Jeb, Lunaros, Malia Schoenberger, Malcolm Mart, MG, Nick Castle, Noodles, Radley Bear, Bradislav Koshevi, and Witch Corpse. Thanks to every other patron in the supporter tier, I really appreciate that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.